Hey, Calculus class. Today you're going to learn topic 22, L'Hopital's rule. It's not pronounced La Hospital. And this is your first BC concept. What we currently know now. So if I wanted to take the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 all over x squared plus 3x plus 2. If I was to plug in negative 2 now, we would get an indeterminate form. And this tells us that we have to use some type of algebra. So what type of algebra are we going to use? You should factor the bottom so that the x plus 2's cancel and you're left with 1 over x plus 1. Now when we plug in negative 2, we would get negative 1. But there is another way. And I want you to see if you can figure out what I did. So I want you just, I'm going to click through it, and I want you to see if you can figure it out. Ta-da! I did something magical, and I got the same answer. Were you able to figure it out? Well, let's see how we did. What I did was called L'Hopital's rule. So suppose f and g are differentiable, and g prime of x does not equal 0, near a, <clears throat> except possibly at a. If we have an indeterminate form, then we can take the limit as x approaches a, and we can take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. And this is what we call L'Hopital's rule. So every time you do this, you need to put or indicate that you're using L'Hopital's rule. And I put a little LH above the equal sign every time I do it. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples. So let's say I was to take the limit as t approaches 0 of e to the 3t minus 1 all over t. When I plug in 0, I would get an indeterminate, for, indeterminate form. In order to use L'Hopital's rule, you always have to check the indeterminate form first. So since I have an indeterminate form, in the past it's always told me to use algebra. But sometimes algebra is not very obvious, such as this problem. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So in order to take the derivative of the top, I will have to use the chain rule when I take the derivative e to the 3t so that I get 3e to the 3t all over 1. Notice how I put the LH above the equal sign indicating that I use L'Hopital. Now let's see what happens when I plug in 0 for t. I would get 3. <clears throat> Alright, I want you to see if you can do example 2 on your own. Alright, let's see how we did. If I was to plug in infinity right now, you would get infinity over infinity. So <clears throat> I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. So to take the derivative of the natural log of the natural log of x, I have to use the chain rule. And when I do that, I'm going to get 1 over x, that's the derivative of the inside, which is ln x, times 1 over ln x, which is the derivative of the outside in terms of the inside, all over 1. After simplifying a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and plug in infinity for x to get 1 over infinity. And a constant over infinity we know to be 0. Now there are other forms of indeterminate uh, forms. So <clears throat> what are they? So when you get one of these forms, you have to rewrite the function as a rational function in order to apply L'Hopital's rule, which means it needs to be written as a fraction, one fraction. So what the other, one of the other forms is 0 times infinity. Another one is infinity minus infinity. Another one is 0 to the 0 power. The next one is infinity to the 0 power. And then the last one is 1 to the infinite power. So let's first look at the types if you get 0 times infinity. <clears throat> so when you have a product of functions, then you're going to rewrite it as f over 1 over g, 
which is the same thing as f over g to the negative 1. So you're using negative exponents to make it a fraction. So let's look at an example. So if I was to take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of sine x times ln x, I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 times negative infinity. So that means I need to move either sine x to the bottom or ln x to the bottom. I chose 1 over, I chose sine x. And you could have written it sine to the negative 1 power, but that's the same thing as 1 over sine x. And if you can remember what is 1 over sine x, well, that's cosecant x. So now let's see what happens when I plug in 0. I'm going to get negative infinity over infinity. So that is one of my no my original indeterminate forms. So now I can go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Simplify it a little bit. Now let's see what happens when I plug in 0. Now I get negative 0 times infinity on the bottom. Well that's still an indeterminate form on the bottom. So that means I'm going to have to either do L'Hopital's rule again, or sometimes algebra is a little bit nicer. So you could either take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom again, but notice on the bottom, if you took the derivative, you have three functions multiplying together, and that just gets a really messy product rule. So let's see if I can figure out some algebra instead. So let's see, maybe I can rewrite the cosecant and the cotangent and the x as separate fractions. And if you notice, 1 over cosecant is the same thing as sine, and 1 over cotangent is the same thing as tangent. So now, if I was to move stuff around, notice that I get a sine x over x. And this is one of your special limit properties. This, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, that goes towards 1. So now let's see what happens when I plug in 0. Now I have negative 1 times the tangent of 0, and the tangent of 0 is just 0, so my answer is 0. Now let's look at the case infinity minus infinity. In this case, find either a common denominator, rationalize, or factor out a common factor. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 of cosecant x minus cotangent x. When I plug in 0, I'm going to get infinity minus infinity. So what can I do? Well, I can rewrite cosecant and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine. So now I can create one fraction by finding a common denominator. Well, they already have sine x as the common denominator. So now I get the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x all over sine x. Now if I plug in 0, I get 0 over 0, which is one of my original indeterminate forms. So now I can go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Now, when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 over 1, which gives me 0. Now the types of any of the exponent ones. In these cases, you're going to want to take the natural log of both sides or rewrite the function as an exponential function. So what that means is you basically have a function to the power of another function. And when you take the natural log of both sides, that means you can use that natural log property of bringing the exponent down in front. Or if you rewrite it as <clears throat> a base of e, you would get e to the g of x times the natural log of f of x. So, <clears throat> Let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of tangent 2x to the x power. When I plug in 0, 
I'm going to get 0 over 0. So the first step is to let the function equal y and take the natural log of both sides and use log properties to simplify. So my function is tangent 2x to the x. Now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So this is similar to logarithmic differentiation. Go ahead and bring the power down in front. Now take the limit of both sides, but only simplify the right side. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And when I take the derivative of, or sorry, the limit of the right side, I get an indeterminate form, 0 times negative infinity. And with this form, I need to figure out how to write this as a single fraction. So I can bring the x down by using negative exponents. I can go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Now when I take the derivative of the top, I have to use the chain rule twice because I have an inner inner function. So my inner inner function v is 2x, my inner function is tangent v, and my outer function is natural log of u. So derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of tangent is secant squared, and the derivative of the natural log, 1 over u. So now, when I multiply those together and replace everything in terms of x, I get the following for the top over the derivative of the bottom. Now, if I was to simplify a little bit, I would get negative 2x squared times secant squared of 2x all over tangent 2x. And I can simplify this even more by bringing the tangent up as cotangent. And <clears throat> I can simplify it even more. And just so you guys know, the reason why I'm simplifying it before I plug in 0 is I'm trying to get it all into sine and cosine, just because it's going to make it easier for me when I plug in 0. And notice that there's a cosine 2x that can be canceled. So now I'm left with x squared over the cosine of 2x times sine 2x as what I'm taking the limit of. And just to make sure you understand, I was able to take out this negative 2 because it does not, uh, re uh, does not um, depend on x. It's just a multiple constant. Now, when I plug in 0, I get 0 over 0. So all of this simplifying was because I had to get 0 over 0. And now I'm going to take L'Hopital's rule. Or it might be easier to do some algebra. And the reason why I'm choosing algebra over L'Hopital's rule is because you got the product rule with the chain rule. And I can split this up into two separate fractions. Notice here, I can make this fraction my special uh, limit trig uh, fraction by multiplying the top and bottom by 2, so that that becomes 1. And then I am left with the following. And this 2 is the one that comes out, so it cancels these 2s, and I'm just left with the negative. Now when I plug in 0, I get 0 over 1, which is 0 but I'm not done. Step three says now, to, now you have to exponentiate both sides to solve for y. So this is what we currently did. What we were just doing in step two was just finding the limit of the right hand side, which we got to be zero. So that means that the natural log of y equals zero. So now to solve for y, I exponentiate both sides to get that y equals 1. So therefore, I can say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of tangent 2x to the x power equals 1. All right, 
your turn. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the limits of the following functions um, using L'Hopital's rule. All right, let's see how we did. So with number one, when you plug in infinity, you're gonna get infinity minus infinity. So if you were to manipulate this a little bit, you could factor out an X, bring that X down to the bottom, L'Hopital both sides, or the top and the bottom, the x to the negative twos cancel along with the negatives. So I'm left with e to the one over x. Now when I plug in infinity, I have e to the one over infinity, which is the same thing as e to the zero, which is one. For the second one, when you plug in zero, you should get one to the infinite power. So that tells me I'm gonna let y equal cosine of three x to the five over x. Natural log both sides, <clears throat> bring down the five over x. And now I'm gonna take the limit of both sides and I'm just gonna concentrate on the limit of the right. I was able to write it as one fraction and I can L'Hopital both sides, because if I plugged in zero, I would get uh, zero over zero. <clears throat> Simplify it a little bit. Plug in zero, and I would get zero. But now I have to let the natural log of y equal zero. Take the exponentiate both sides, so y equals one, so therefore my limit equals one. All right, for the third one, if you plugged in infinity, you get infinity times zero. So that means I'm gonna bring the x down using negative exponents. L'Hopital both sides, <clears throat> or yeah, the top and the bottom. The x to the negative twos cancel. So I'm left with secant squared uh, of one over x. Plug in infinity, so I get secant squared of zero, and secant of zero is one. I hope you enjoyed learning L'Hopital's rule. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.